What's up guys, my name is Devin and welcome back to the Lifting and Rigging channel. Today, I'm gonna have Tom Horner, our Corporate Rigging Inspection Manager, uh, join us again because we're gonna talk about non-destructive testing. Now, this is a service that's offered by a lot of different companies, but there's a lot of misconceptions about it. So what we wanted to do is spend some time talking about what non-destructive testing is, go into some history about kind of where it came from and some misconceptions that people might have about it and talk about what other services are available if non-destructive testing might not be a good fit for you. So, uh, Tom, thank you for joining me today. No problem. And so if people don't really know you or kind of what you do in the company, could you take a minute and just kind of introduce yourself, talk a little bit about what you do offer for the company, and uh, then we'll just get started. Sure. Tom Horner, Corporate Rigging Inspection Manager. Uh, been with the company about 25 years now. We handle all aspects of the rigging inspections for our customers, uh, keeping them OSHA and ASME compliant regarding their slings, their rigging, below the hook devices, etc. Let's just get started by covering, you know, what is non-destructive testing? What does it mean? Well, there's many forms of non-destructive testing. Uh, the method we use at Mozilla 99% uh, of the time is uh, the dry method magnetic particle, which is just inducing a magnetic field into a device and uh, dusting over uh, a metal powder that uh, at times uh, will possibly show an indication, uh, not necessarily a crack, and give us something further uh, to dig into. And so typically, what does this accomplish? Like you said, sometimes it can show an indication, but what's the, the real purpose of this type of like mag particle test? It's often thought of that it's a much better uh, form of inspection versus the visual inspection. Um, visual inspections are only required in ASME but sometimes customers want to go above and beyond. And uh, what we always are asked is, hey, we want to check for cracks. And really what we're doing is this method allows us to look at the basically the welds of a device, uh, if accessible, and look to see if any of the welds are showing any indications that there might be something going on there, such as a crack. Let's talk about some obstacles with performing these tests and trying to make sure that they are doing what they want them to do. So when your inspectors are in the field and they're they're going out to perform a mag particle, you know, what kind of things are they experiencing? What are they seeing? What are some of their pain points when they're trying to perform these services? Sure, when, when we're asked to do this, when and it's typically on a below the hook lifting device, and let's just use the easiest one, which is a spreader beam with a bail. Um, customers will often ask, hey, we want to get the welds around our bail checked or any of the critical welds on the device. And what you're going to have is, number one, the device is probably going to be heavily covered in paint. The next you're going to run into is, is the item dirty. Is it just covered in oil, grease, dirt, grime, all that stuff. In order to properly perform a non-destructive test, the, the dry method, the weld specifically is going to need to be absolutely clean, which means not only is all that dust, dirt, debris going to need to be removed, you're also going to have to remove the paint because the magnetic field only can penetrate uh, into the metal so far if there is interference. We use a two-pronged probe and it's, it's a larger device, but weighs about eight pounds. And you know, the size of the device only allows us to really maneuver the, pro, the prongs into certain areas. So after you, you do all that, you, you have to have really good surface contact to induce a strong field into you know the lifter that you're going to be inspecting so you have to make sure all the paints removed uh, quite a bit of paint depending on you know the access to the welds and then obviously you're going to be talking about all the the grease and the grime having to be removed the the real challenge when we start talking about that is okay well do we need any chemicals to remove all that grease grime and dirt and what does that look like just getting the chemicals into a facility uh, you know, getting the device clean after we've, you know, used the chemicals on it, MSDS, approvals, um, you know, containment in case there was some sort of a spillage. Um, you know, those are the challenges just, just in the cleaning. When it comes to the paint removal, well, how are you going to get the paint off? Again, are you going to use a high-powered chemical or are you going to use something like a wire wheel? So now you could be talking about, okay, what other PPP is required? Do you need to quarantine off an area? Do you need hot metal work because you might be causing a spark as that wire brush is removing the paint? How much paint do you have to remove? Um, you take a very nice looking below the hook device, nicely painted, and you remove 
all of the paint four inches on either side of this weld that you need to inspect and all of a sudden you've got a really ugly below the hook device. So what are you going to do at the end of the inspection? Are you going to, you know, be required to repaint it? How are you going to get the paint to match? Then again, you're still talking about all the same stuff. PPE, quarantine off an area because you don't want excess spray everywhere and all the challenges that come along with that. Well, all that's required is, you know, per ASME, if we're talking about below the hook, is, is a periodic visual inspection of, you know, tagging structural and mechanical factors of the device. There is no requirement within OSHA or ASME for any kind of non-destructive test on any, any of these devices. Most often what we find is a particular customer might have an internal standard requiring it, and again, if that's the case, we'll, we'll work with the customer to figure out a solution. But most of the time, customers are seeking, well, my eyes only can catch so much, this has to be better. And it just often turns out to be that these devices are designed to be used and never have to have a non-destructive test. Right, and then really that kind of speaks to the, the competency of the people that are doing your inspections. If you're hiring people that you're not certain are you know properly credentialed to perform your inspections, if you think that they would miss something like that, then you probably have the wrong people in your facility anyway. Absolutely. You know, for people that are going to perform these types of mag particle tests or non-destructive tests, are there different levels of training depending on who can perform these versus who has access to just buying the equipment? Yeah, and, and to be, you know, for clarity purposes, you know, we're not a non-destructive testing company. We're a lifting and rigging company that happens to provide inspections that meet the ASME standards. We just happen to have this as another tool in our back pocket that sometimes can complement the visual inspection. Now, when you start talking about a non-destructive uh, testing organization and this is their specialty absolutely there's many many different types of, of non-destructive testing and when you start talking about let's say the level threes these are generally people who graduated and are engineers metallurgists they sat under a level three for many many hours and I want to say it could be up to 400 hours underneath another specialist just performing this technique before they're allowed to go out on their own and then they're writing up much different reports based on the findings of you know whatever uh, you know whatever um, however whatever specialty they're using um, and and basic it on okay what type of weld what type of you know material are they inspecting I mean they're really it, it's really a very high level uh, product a very high level business So if you're working with a customer and let's say that they, you know, either they were told or maybe they were just talking to somebody who said you need to get this mag particle test done on all your, you know, below the hook lifters because that's the best way and that's the safest way. If you're working with a customer who's just convinced that like this is the end all be all, this is the safest method, you know, how do you educate them on maybe some of the inconsistencies with that line of thinking versus what, you know, other things are available as opposed to just a mag particle? Right. It just starts with the, the right conversation. We, we first want to explain to the customer and making sure we're all on the same page regarding what ASME requires, um, make sure what OSHA requires, and then we want to understand really why they're making the request. It, it, you've been doing it historically. Why? Well, just because that's what we've always done. Well, let's let's dig a little deeper. Let's really start to look into because then you start do throwing out the challenges of you know, the non-destructive testing is, it's, I, I gave you a simple situation, you know, you're just checking the, checking the welds around a bale, but let's say you wanted to check all the critical welds. Well, you might get into, okay, we're going to need a team of your people to shut down this crane and shut down this device because we're going to have to go through this on all your welds. And then we're going to have to maybe flip the device over, set it on different parts in order to make welds accessible because we can't mag particle upside down and it's very challenging to even mag particle side to side because you want the dust to slowly layer over the area that you've magnetized and you want to move your gun in different in different areas around the weld to try and find indications at different angles 
So there, and this is really the most simple type of non-destructive testing, and you can already see what kind of challenges you run into just trying to apply this method. Absolutely, and I think that's a good point. Like with the lifting and rigging channel in general, the focus is always trying to figure out what the best practice is, or you know maybe how to figure out what your resources are and make the best decision for you. So it's not like we're even just saying that you know non-destructive testing is bad. What we're saying is we just need to figure out what conversation we need to have to make sure that we figure out what the right fit is for you. Maybe that is non-destructive testing if you do have, you know, easy access bales or, you know, like you said, with the the, the forks on, on a tow motor. You know, there are situations where this thing can actually work and work well, but those conversations have to take place both to shut down any misconceptions or misunderstandings, but then also just to really get a good, clean sense of what the application is specifically and then dress to suit it. I think it's easy to go, well, this worked for us or I use this all the time because I like it, but that's kind of dangerous thinking if you're just going off of what you did last time or what somebody else told you to do. And so Tom, for you, for your team, I mean, if people do have more questions about this type of application for um, inspections, you know, where, where can they go to, to ask you questions or to learn more or to find out more about this type of process? Absolutely, they can always direct a, a question to my attention and, and just simple research on the web. Look up, you know, if, if you're interested in the magnetic particle method, just do a little research. It's all out there. It's definitely something that can be used in the right uh, environment. So if you're watching this video and you're either thinking that you might need non-destructive, you know, inspections for your system, or, you know, maybe you've heard of a mag particle test and you're really interested in maybe getting that performed in your services, reach out to one of our lifting specialists, reach out to our inspection group and start asking those questions, start having those conversations, make sure that you're getting what you need to be able to continue performing your work safely. And then for yourself, if you want to make sure that you are upping the industry knowledge of your own people, we've got a couple of different courses online that are free, liftingu.com, you can find some overhead crane courses. We actually have an entire course dedicated specifically to sling inspections. We cover the seven primary lifting slings. You'll see a lot of Tom and Tom's group helping teach you how to do physical hand over hand inspections and stuff like that. And so thank you everybody else for watching. We'll catch you next time on the Lifting and Rigging channel.